All right, what is going on everyone? Back here with another video. I know it's been so long since the last one, and I apologize, but uh, I want to start the video by saying thank you for 500 subscribers. You know, it's, uh, it really means a lot to me that you guys subscribe to the channel and watch the video. So anybody who's ever you know subscribed or watched the video, like the video, comment, thank you very much. So let's go ahead and get on with the meat and potatoes of the video. As you can see, we've made a lot of changes to the uh, home lab rack. So let's go ahead and uh, first things first, let's start at the top. So we still got the Cisco switch, but it's at the very top now. That is that. We've got the hatch rack, what do you call this thing? A, a brush panel. We got the brush panel cleaning up the cables. I figured I'd give an update on this switch. It's a pretty good switch. I got it for $40 when I first built this whole rack deal. It's a pretty good switch, gigabit, still running great. Just a little loud, but you know, what are you gonna do for 40 bucks? Moving on down, we've got the brush panel. Just cleaning up the cables. Uh, the cable management in this thing really does suck right now. And I apologize if I sound kind of stuffy. I, uh, I'm kind of sick right now. So, and oh yeah, and I hope everybody's doing okay in this whole virus thing hope everybody's doing well nobody's sick anything like that so anyway yeah brush panel and then i've got this guy right here so this is the arista dcs 7148sx this is actually a pretty recent purchase i got off ebay this was about 290 dollars and 300 dollars with shipping and all that stuff i'm trying to get all my servers connected via 10 gigabit for $300, you can get 48 uh, 10 gigabit SFP Plus ports. It's a good switch. Now, the only downside to this switch is it runs hot and it uses a lot of power. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't stay on 24-7, but, you know, it is there. Uh, for the price, you know, the only other options you have in that kind of price range is moving up to a $400 switch, which is the uh, Microtik. I think 16 port 10 gigabit switch which is $400 for 16 ports which really doesn't make a whole lot of sense so that's why I went with that you know I wasn't really going to get the Cisco Nexus series because it's really 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 loud and uh you know I can go ahead and fire it up for you guys why not go ahead and plug this thing in now it does get very loud when you boot it up for the first time So as you can see, the switch is finally booted up. And I'm not sure how well you can hear that. Let me take this off the tripod just for a second here. You guys can kind of hear it. It's actually not that loud. And uh, I've got the fan speed turned down to about 40%. So, you know, it's still running at a good speed. But this is actually a fantastic switch. Uh, this does take a it just fine. Uh, iPerf indicates it's getting around 948 megabytes per second sustained. So it's really, really nice switch for the money. I think it's awesome. As you guys can see, it's not too loud. It runs a little warm, but you know, it is what it is. I'll go ahead and unplug that real quick. Show you guys the back of the rack. As you can see, the cable management is non-existent at the moment. So, and uh, if you guys are wondering about the, um, CLI on the Arista. Let's so get that back on there. All right, as I was saying, um, I know a lot of people were kind of confused on like how this switch worked, uh, the CLI, it's layer three capabilities and all that stuff. The CLI is identical, almost, <laughs> pretty much identical to the Cisco CLI. It's really, really easy. If you know anything about Cisco, or you've worked on Cisco, this thing, it'll be up and running in about 20 minutes. So, really nice switch for the money. I definitely recommend this switch. Uh, I wouldn't pay like $400 just to get a 16 port switch. You know, you got 48 ports, you got all the ports in the world to do, you know, port bonding and LACP and all that good stuff, 20 gigabit, all that good stuff. But, uh, let's see here. Moving on down, we've got the, not sure what you guys can see that. 
We've got the PowerEdge R410. You guys know this server very well. This is my old file server. This has been recommissioned, or I guess repurposed, as my new PFSense firewall and router. This handles all the routing between the VLANs. Uh, I've got the firewall, got a couple of rules up there, but anyway, just a basic PFSense firewall. I do want to uh, find a R210 too, something that uses just a little bit less power um, and runs a little bit cooler, but you know, beggars can't be choosers here. And I already had this, so that's that. <clears throat> and then we have a new addition. This is my PowerEdge R510. Now this is something that I've been hunting for for, man, months. <laughs> After I sold my second R710, I uh, began looking for one of these things and it took about three, four months for me to find one for a good price because I wasn't paying, you know, $400, $500 for R510. But yeah, this is my PowerEdge R510. This has uh, dual, what is it, freaking, it's dual low power six cores, uh, 32 gigs of RAM. This runs Windows Server 2019. And this is my, basically my backup server. This uh, has a bunch of these, I think, two terabyte Seagate Constellation drives. Uh, it's not full. It's just a kind of a mismatch, uh, mismatch bunch of disk kind of thing. Uh, this has backups for my ESXi cluster, my Mac Pro, and uh, a bunch of other stuff, like software images, music from years and years and years ago, you know, a huge iTunes library. All that stuff is hosted on this uh, R510. This is an awesome server. I, if you can find one of these for, you know, around $300, $350, I definitely say go for it, man. These are awesome servers. And let's see here, moving down. And this is the only server that's, these two are the only ones that aren't connected via 10 gigabit yet. but. I do have some cards get ready to go in there. Might make a video on that, might not. Just don't have a whole lot of time right now. So let me back this up just a little bit. And then we can see the new additions. As you guys know, I had one X serve last time. These are actually three completely different units. These are 2009 dual CPU, eight core units with 48 gigabytes of RAM a piece. I came across a huge lot of these for a really good price and I bought uh, a whole lot of these things. I actually have only a few more because I've been selling them online, but these are my 2009 Xserves. These are actually in a ESXi cluster. Now, <laughs> getting these up and running with ESXi was uh, a little bit funky, but um, these were actually running Proxmox before, which was a huge failure. And, uh, you know, it's not Proxmox's fault or anything like that. I just couldn't get Proxmox up and running the way I wanted to. But, another story for another day. These are now running ESXi version 6.5 U3. So, um, these all have 10 gigabit X520 DA2 network cards in them. And they're all connected via 10 gigabit as well as gigabit to the uh, Cisco switch up here. These are my ESXi hosts, like I said. Um, this top one uh, has the mine on for whatever reason, but these are absolutely awesome ESXi hosts for the uh, for what I use them for. Yeah, they're basically just uh, a couple of labs on here, you know, Azure, Active Directory, a bunch, a couple of Kali Linux VMs, stuff like that. But I'll get into these excerpts at another later date because uh, this is a whole video on its own. I am gonna be doing some Mac OS stuff. Don't worry, I know original followers you guys do enjoy the mac os stuff we are going to be building a mac os you know x serve just to run mac os we're going to be building a x serve just for running mac os with uh, 10 gigabit functionality a couple drives in it uh we are going to be building the ultimate x serve here i guess in the next two or three months i've just been super super busy but moving on to my favorite server in the rack right now this is the r720 xd i do have plans to purchase another one of these so this is basically running all the services to make this cluster work so this has got vcenter server this has got I'm, I'm sorry the vcenter appliance for vcenter server uh it's got the domain controller active directory all that stuff and it's got it's got a bunch of these 900 gigabyte 10,000 rpm 
Sass Drives, which is running as an iSCSI target for all three of these ESXi hosts right here, and it works awesome. It took a little while to get everything figured out for whatever reason. Uh, ESXi didn't want to play nice with the network and all that stuff, but it's all up and running now. It is what it is. Uh, I am I do plan on filling this up in the near future with a bunch of 900 gigabyte or more 900 gigabyte SAS drives. These things are super fast. Uh, these are all in a RAID 0, and these all get backed up to the R510 pretty much every time I make a, a significant change or I get new ISO files or something like that. So, yeah, that's pretty much the rack uh, update for now, guys. You know, a lot has changed, as you can see. I've got the X serves, and if I actually go over here, I've got some more stuff that's pending. I've got a NetApp. I've got a... <laughs> Uh, then at DS4246 that I have, uh, this was given to me for free. I don't know if I'm going to be using this yet. Probably not. But I've got more excerpts. Uh, these are pending sales. I have more excerpts coming in uh, uh, sometime this week. And if you go to the back there, you can't really see it. And then there's the original single CPU excerpt that's uh, kind of just sitting in storage right now no use but yeah i do have plans to add a couple more things i want to add a secondary r720 xd as a replacement for these two excerpts as cool as this is you know it does use a lot of power and consolidating two hosts into a single host is going to be really power efficient so do want to do that I'm going to be adding a excerpt just for mac os administration stuff it's going to have an nvme ssd i'm going to be editing off of that directly instead of the Mac Pro, which I'll get into actually just a second. Uh, this space will be filled up by a UPS here soon. I do plan on getting a UPS. I know it's kind of dumb to be running all this stuff without a UPS, but, you know, what are you going to do? This stuff doesn't stay on 24-7. All this stuff gets backed up pretty regularly. So, yep. And if I go down to the other setup over here, it's kind of dirty, so for, forgive that, please. We've got the standard setup we all know and love. Uh, you know, 30 inch Apple cinema display, 4K monitor, 23 inch uh, X1 controllers, uh, Logitech G910 keyboard, dirty. Mac Pro, still the same, still kicking. Uh, I had plans to replace this a few months ago, but they never came to fruition. Put this over there. As you can see, this thing is still kicking running the Radeon Vega 64. It's got two 3.06 gigahertz, quad, or I'm sorry, six core CPUs, 32 gigs of RAM. The Pixels power supply mod, can't really see it because it's dark. Uh, you know, still kicking. It's got a 10 gig card, USB 3.1 card. Uh, I don't really have any plans for this. In fact, I might be replacing it here within the next six months with a new Mac Pro. <laughs> and that's, in fact, that's a completely another video, another story for another time. But yeah, this thing might be getting replaced. Uh, I might have the opportunity to purchase a new Mac Pro, a 7.1, and I'll be going over why I'll be buying that in uh, whatever the time approaches when uh, I can actually confirm that I'm gonna buy that. But might be getting a 7.1. But that's pretty much it, guys. I mean. I've just been super slam packed, jam busy with everything. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. And thank you guys so much for 500 subscribers. I will turn the camera around my face so I can, so you guys can see my genuine, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. You guys, thank you guys so much for 500 subscribers. And I'll see you in the next one.